I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of this newsletter is going to be pickup hits and misses. I've got a quote before we get into this email. I've got an email here with probably four or five different scenarios, short scenarios, where a guy's encountered a girl and he wants me to critique the situation. And so a quote that I want to go over, this is from Nadia Komenich. She was a, uh, a gold-winning Olympic uh, medalist back in the, she was a gymnast, back in the 19, I guess ni late 1970s, early 1980s, she was real, I think from Romania. She was very successful. And she said, I love this because it's so true. She says, gravitate to people who are doing productive and positive things with their lives. Well, as you probably heard me, if you watch my videos on health or life in general, is that circulation is the key to the universe. It's also the key to having a healthy body. And it's obviously important if you want to improve your social life that you got to get out and circulate amongst people who are doing the kinds of things that you like to do and have fun with. Just like Nadia's quote, gravitate to people who are doing productive and positive things with their lives. In other words, hang out with people who are trying to better themselves, who are trying to improve themselves, who are uplifting to be around, people who are optimistic. These are people that the glass is half full, not half empty. The people that see the glass is half empty, that's their that's pretty much where they live. Is they expect things not to work out and so their brain, they've they've literally conditioned and trained their brain to always look for the things that suck in their lives and the things that aren't going to work out or that aren't working out for them presently in their lives. So the first scenario, he says, he says, I quite often get the let's go out as a group response. What the fuck does that mean? Is she just challenging me or implying that I'm in the friend zone? I'd say she's implying you're in the friend zone. We met at dinner and me and my friends thought she was coming on to me. I left early because I had to work. I had work to do. But I left my name with one of her male friends who, be, who I became friends with, telling him to have her add me on Facebook. Well, that's where you fucked up. That's pretty, pretty weak. You don't have the balls to ask her in person, and you're, all your buddies are talking about this girl, and you're probably all oogling her, going, oh, she's got a great body, she's got a nice ass, what a great fucking rack she's got, she's really beautiful, whatever it happens to be. And so you and your buddies are all talking about this stuff, and she knows nothing of it because you don't make any attempt or any t action taking in her direction. And then you go and you ask a friend, the weak approach, to send her your name. That's just, in, in other words, let her do all, all of the work. And, at, and it, in other words, asking her to be the man. And that's, that's why you get the let's go out in a group because you're putting, instead of putting out the lover vibe, you're putting out the friendship vibe. You're putting out the nice guy vibe. Guys that are too unsure of themselves to go for what they want. So they do things like, you know, hey, give this girl my number kind of shit. It's, this abs you, you're so complete waste of time to ask somebody to do it. Because not only do you look weak to your buddies, you're going to look weak to the girl. He says, I thought that if she would be interested, she would follow the trail and hunt me down, which surprisingly she did. She added me on Facebook along with the male guy that I gave my name to. One of my friends who was there with me also got added by her. So everything you're doing is friendship vibe. Hey, let's keep in contact and be friends, in essence, is what you're doing. If you were direct and got right to the point, you said, Hey, i got to run, but I'd definitely like to meet up with you, maybe for a drink some night. When are you free to get together? Let her tell you, make a definite date, exchange numbers, and say, Great, I'll see you then. And then go about your life. Go on with your party or whatever. And then you would have been, the, when you left, you would have been feeling like a million bucks because now you got a definite date set up with a girl and you put your balls around the chopping block. But instead, you drive away from the encounter going, gee, I hope my friend gets my number to this girl and I hope she gets in touch with me. He's my first question. Should I take it as a sign of interest that she hunted me down and added me on Facebook? No, she's just, she's participating in the friendship vibe that you put out there and she's doing what, she's adding a new friend, not a potential lover. If she was adding a potential lover, she would have just gone ahead and friended you on Facebook without you even asking or bringing it up. Big difference. He says, and she also added my friend, so it doesn't seem that she is coming on to me too strong and being desperate. Or do you think she's just being ex extremely friendly and adding me along with my friend because she just thought we were her new friends in the same college? I don't get it, bro. My head hurts. He, 
Well, that's exactly what is going on because she thought of you as a friend. And it's because of how you interacted with her. So he says, anyways, here's a conversation I had with this chick on Facebook after she added me. Hey, what's your number? Her, hey, it's blah, blah, blah. I hope you can make it tonight. And he says, not tonight, I'm working, but let's do something crazy tomorrow night. You have any plans? And she says, I'm actually a bit busy tomorrow, unfortunately, but I'll be out and about. We could definitely meet out and get together as a group, and we'll all come back after spring break. Have fun working. So, yeah, you're definitely in friend zone there. But you put yourself there by your actions. You, I mean, it's like you totally fucked up at the beginning, so it really doesn't matter what you do after the fact because you blew it. So he says, there's another scenario. My confidence is a little high right now because of a couple of weeks ago, I was standing in an extremely crowded bar at a dance at my school, and there was a girl standing right next to me. I asked her a random question, and she said something, but I couldn't hear her. So I leaned over, and then, since I had grown a pair of balls under the influence, I bent over and started kissing her. She kissed me back passionately. It was perhaps one of the most exciting and gratifying kisses I have ever had. You see what happens when you go for things and you don't care? She probably had, I mean, she's out, she's having fun, you know, you're at college, you're all away from your parents at the same time, everyone wants to hang out, have fun, and hook up. Guys and girls both want to do the same thing. Women just want to find a guy that knows what he's doing and can create a great, fun-filled, romantic opportunity for sex to happen instead of some weird, awkward moment. So he says, we, we kissed for what seemed like an eternity, though it was probably a minute or two, and then she asked me what I was doing. In other words, what she's really saying is, what do you want to do next? I hope you'll be the leader and take me home to your bed. And then, so basically what happened is you probably proceeded to talk her right out of sleeping with you, which is what most guys do. He says, I told her I was going to the dance floor, act, act, but to access it required buying a ticket. And I asked her if she would be there. She said she might be, but she can't guarantee it. I don't know if it was her way of putting me off or saying that take me away now and don't go to the dance floor. I mean, she was basically, hey, because all you had to say to her was, hey, why don't we get out of here and grab a bottle of wine and go back to my place? Or, hey, why don't we go back... Go back to my. Why don't we get out here and go back to my place? I got a bottle of wine or I got champagne back there. And we'll have a little champagne party. She would have been like, "Cool, grab her hand," and you would have fucking hauled ass. That's all you had to do. But instead, you stood around looking at she. She's expecting you to be the leader. You're expecting her looking at her like she's supposed to know what to do next. It, it's up to you to lead the interaction to where you want it to go. And obviously, this was shocking to you because you put yourself out there and you you did what you didn't do in the first scenario you shared. So one of her girlfriends ended up coming over and taking her away by the hand. Yeah, it was a missed opportunity. You probably could have taken that girl home and slept with her. He says, I also have this girl living in my dorm that I thought was on to me. As she approached me at lunch for the first time, introduced herself and made conversation. And whenever she saw me walking the hall, she would let out an excited hey, and her face would light up, and we would make some small talk before I excuse myself. Well, after brimming with confidence after scenario two, I thought I'd just do the same with this girl. My entire whole local dance club and so i saw her there took the lead took her by the hand led her to the dance floor i'm very new to the dancing scene so i had no fucking clue what i was doing but i decided to go on and have fun anyways that's the best way to go about it if you dance like shit if you, you tell a girl like i can't dance for shit but i'm gonna get out there and make a fool out of myself and either way i promise you we're gonna have a great time even if everybody's laughing at me it's like because you don't fucking care and a girl will be like let's go i'll teach you some moves he says if you have any suggestions how to improve the skill let me know because anyways, a minute into the random dancing with her, I went for her lips and was, and was not able to successfully kiss her. She then told me that she had to go see some friends, and I knew that was a cop-out, so... He says, I later saw her grinding on one of my friends. I got butt hurt. Yeah, it's just you're, you're doing things a little out of sequence. If you were that close to a girl, look at her lips and then to her eyes, and then her lips and then her eyes. And if she wants to kiss you, she'll look at your eyes. And that's more than likely what happened with the first girl, but you probably, because you were too drunk to notice it, that's probably what happened because she liked you when you were, she was physically in you, into you, and you just didn't know what to do to move it to outside the club. So, you know, like the, the one you did, we just went through. I mean, obviously, making the kiss was out of sequence, and you know, total lack of sensory acuity on that one. He says, in this scenario, the fourth scenario, he says, a friend of mine ran into me at a local fast food joint where I was talking to another girl who I wasn't really interested in, but I was practicing with. I actually liked this friend of mine, so I told her, watch over my stuff and get some food, and I'll be back in a jiffy after walking this other girl to her dorm. I did just that, and when I got back, we ate late dinner together. This friend of mine was a little drunk. We live on the same floor. 
And so we walked back to the dorm together where I told her to come to my room for Sambuca. We went to my room. We talked a little. I was sitting in my bed and she was standing. I poured her a glass of liquor and poured myself in a teacup. I didn't have any shop glass. So we drank, talked a little bit more. And then I grabbed her by the hand, gently started kissing her. She didn't kiss me back and told me on the cheek only. I thought she was giving me a hard time. So I kept kissing her till she was like, I need to go. Again, lack of sensory acuity. It's great that you're going for it. You're putting yourself out there. But what's happening here is that you're making moves and you're going for the kiss when you're because you're not paying any attention to whether she's ready or not. And looking at a woman's lips and have to see if she looks at yours. If a girl looks at your lips, then that means, yeah, she's thinking about kissing you. And then, you know, when to go for it, you don't have to worry about risking getting rejection, rejected, I should say. So the fifth scenario, he says, he says, I had another friend of mine who's extremely nice to me and follows me around like a cat. And I'm not sure if this girl's into me or just being a very good friend. So I take the approach that if any girl is extraordinarily nice, approachable, and talkative to me without make, me making any effort, then she must be into me. Great assumption. Good fucking job there. That's exactly the way you need to think. And you think like that. You think, hey, all girls want me. And then if they end up not reciprocating later on, then it's their loss and you feel that way. He says, I'm acting aloof so far because of all of my scroops. Is there a safe way I can do something with her? She's told me... And friends about all the crazy sex she has during a drinking game, and she seems very approachable. It's like so when a girl starts saying that, she starts talking about crazy sex. It's like, hey, you know, why don't we get out of here and go back to my place, and we'll get some crazy sex on. And she'll giggle and laugh and bump your arm. She's standing close to you. Then you just say, I think you just need to get over it and kiss me right now. That's always a good thing to throw out there. If you're unsure and you're having a good time, you've been hanging out for a while, and the girl's touching your arm, you throw that out there, and then she'll go ahead and kiss you. It's one of my favorite to use. It's like one of these days I'm waiting to throw that out there and a girl will go like, you know, I heard I heard that I've heard that line about a hundred times. You know, it's, so I'm kinda nervous about putting things out some of the things out there that I use a lot because eventually everybody's gonna be using the same shit. So he says, I also mentioned a great restaurant in a different city at dinner once and she excitedly said, Let's go there. It's likely we'll go as a group, not on a date, though I'm not sure. I'm willing to take my chances as I can learn from every mistake I make, but I don't want to go into the field again without some feedback. So with this particular girl, she's always following you around. What you got to look for, and I talk about this in my book, and I would encourage you to go back and review it because you're not paying attention. When a girl is interested in you, she's going to physically stand next to you. She's going to stand too close. When you're sitting next together, her knee will be bumping yours. She'll reach out over. She'll touch your arm. She'll be playing with her hair with her hands when you're talking, twirling around her finger or running her hands through, that's kind of her way of saying, hey, look at me, I'm beautiful, I hope you like me, I hope you notice me, I hope you find me physically attractive. These are just things that women naturally do when they're with a guy that they like. And so when a woman's bumping you or you're walking down the street and she's kind of bumping into you shoulder to shoulder as you're walking side by side, I mean, at some point you can just grab her and pull her in and go for the kiss or you can just, if you're sitting there talking and she's touching you like that, you just say, I think you need to get it over with and kiss me. If she's sitting on the other side of the table and she's reaching across touching your arm, you say, hey, why don't you come over here and sit next to me? Invite her to come over and sit down next to you. And then just look her in the eyes, look her at her lips, and then back into her eyes. And if she looks at your lips at that time, then go for the kiss. And so the, after all these scenarios going through them here, your thing is you're not paying attention to the physical signs when touching is appropriate and when to back off. And so therefore you're kissing when you really should be hanging back and chilling, just like the girl that came back to your place with a Sambuca. You made a move on her when the moment was appropriate. Because she's in, she's in your place, it's kind of a new thing. If you'd just been cool, hang back, have a couple of drinks, shoot the shit, and you could have just said, hey, I think you need to get it over to come over and kiss me. You could have said that to her, and she would have kissed you because she would have had time to feel comfortable in your place. The idea is you always can be cognizant of, a, of, of whether or not the woman feels safe and comfortable and just by paying attention to her body language. So go back to my book and review those topics on body language. If you don't have a copy, go to my website. The link to download it is underneath the email sign-up box. And if you'd like to get my help right away with dating, relationships, pickup skills, entrepreneurship, business, you want to change your career, you want to find out what your purpose is in life, you want to start an exercise program, you want to lose weight, whatever area you want to work on in your life, go to my website, click the products tab at the top of your screen, and just follow the instructions for booking a paid phone coaching session. And I'll talk to you soon.